So he says, the Father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. So if you don't get anything else, get this. God is a rewarder, and he loves to bless his children. in us to bring healing and miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational And curses. welcome today to I Word break. Alive. I'm Pastor Bob Rogers. Today we're in the midst of 21 days of prayer and fasting. We began on uh, January, in the first of January, and we take the first 21 days to fast. Often we continue the fast to 30 days, sometimes 40 days. One time I fasted 100 days. I didn't fast uh, totally after 40 days. I didn't eat anything the first 40 and then ate one small meal a day for 100 days. That year, I can't even e explain to you the miracles that have happened. It changed everything in my ministry. And fasting will do the same for you. Today I'm going to share with you how you can fast. And God wants you to fast. If you don't fast, you are operating on a three-legged stool and you're missing one of the great four foundations of God. There are four foundations in the scripture. One is prayer. Two is is giving, three is fasting, and four is faith. And unless you use those four concepts and those four disciplines, you will never accomplish the, the level that God has for you. So today is going to be a special, special time. I believe God is going to speak to many people to begin a life of fasting. Uh, take a day a week, whatever day you take, Monday. So every Monday you fast. Or if it's Wednesday, it's every Wednesday you fast. Or begin to go on a longer fast. Longer fasts do greater and bigger things. But before we go into our story about fasting and our sermon today, I have a magazine and a one-year Bible that I want to send to you. Some of you uh, have a heart for Israel like I do. The Bible says that an angel goes through and places a mark on those who sigh and cry for the abominations of Jerusalem. That's what I've been doing, especially on this time of fasting. And God needs people to fast and pray for Israel. This is very critical. People don't realize and you don't get the full, the full news from our news media. But this is very serious, what is happening and probably could be the beginning of the Battle of Armageddon. So God is needing people to rise up and to pray. I share some things on this that uh, you need to know. We're helping to feed those that have been in kibbutz and lost everything, lost their, their home, their clothing, their family members. And we have those that are in Jerusalem and Israel now that are going down to the kibbutzes. And I want to thank so many of you that have sent seeds and monies to help make this possible. Uh, I want to show you this uh, magazine and the one-year Bible and give you an update and tell you what your money is going for. Are you tired of feeling stuck? Stuck in your walk with God? Stuck with physical pain? Stuck with mental oppression? God wants to equip you to break every barrier holding you down so you can soar to new heights. 2024 is the year of open doors and Bob Rogers Ministries has some amazing resources for you to accomplish all that God has for you. Introducing the 21 Day Fast Magazine, authored by the world's leading teacher on prayer and fasting, Dr. Bob Rogers. This comprehensive guide outlines the power of prayer and fasting through biblical examples and personal testimonies while also giving you practical tips to successfully reach your fasting goal. For your best gift to the ministry, we'll send you this amazing resource. But that's not all. We're also making available the One Year Bible featuring 15-minute daily readings that will take you through the entire Bible in 2024. For your gift of $58 or more, we'll provide both the 21-Day Fast Magazine and the One Year Bible. 
This gift not only grants you access to these powerful resources, but also supports our mission to feed Israeli families whose homes have been destroyed in the war. We've been serving for nine years in Israel as missionaries, and this is a strategic time in the history of Israel. This war with Hamas and uh, Gaza has been unprecedented. We thank you for giving because your money has made a difference. We've been able to assist 43 families whose homes have been destroyed or partially destroyed thanks to you in part and other givers. Your giving has made a difference. And uh, in Genesis 12, 3, those who bless Israel will be blessed. Watch out those who have given what God's gonna do in your life. With your generous gift, we'll not only bless the nation of Israel, but you'll also receive two amazing resources that will empower you to have your best year yet. Call 502-962-9650 or visit bobrogersministries.org to unlock the power of prayer and fasting. Make 2024 your year of open doors. Would you take your Bible and hold it to the Lord? If you don't have a Bible, just hold your hand up. But I want everyone to say with me, this is the Word of God. This is God's plan for my life. It's a road map. It shows me which way to go. It tells me how to think, how to overcome sin. Today I shall hear the word of God, and faith cometh by hearing, and hearing from God's word. As you remain standing, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 6. This is a part of the Sermon on the Mount, and that was a sermon that Jesus preached, and he preached it probably a hundred times. This wasn't a one-time sermon, but this are a collection of his sermons. And here in the sixth chapter, beginning with verse two, and it says, therefore, when you give, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say to you, they had the rewards. But when you do us your arms, don't let the left hand know what the right hand does. And thine alms shall be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Would you say that with me? And the father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. And then in verse six, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into your closet when you shut the door, pray to the father which is in secret, and the father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Say that with me and he shall reward thee openly. And then in verse uh, 16, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites who have a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say, they have their reward. But verse 18 says, but thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and the Father which sitteth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen, and you may be seated. God bless you. Anytime God says something one time, it's important. But if he says it twice, and he says it in the same chapter twice, it's really important. But that's not what happens here. He says it three times. So he says, the father who sees in secret shall reward you openly. So if you don't get anything else, get this. God is a rewarder and he loves to bless his children. So when it comes to giving, this giving Praying, fasting, and faith are the four pillars of Christianity. These are what makes a person a disciple and victorious in everything they do. When a person will pray, will give, will fast, and believes what they're doing will come to pass, nothing will be impossible to you. Nothing. You can accomplish anything through prayer, fasting, giving, and faith. 
And so he says, God is a rewarder. But when you read, he goes on to say that he'll bless us 30, 60, and 100 fold. Say that with me. 30, 60, and 100 fold. And so if a person just prays, they get a reward, but that is a 30 fold blessing. But if they pray and they give, you get the blessing from praying, and then you get the blessing from giving. That's a 60 fold blessing. But the hundredfold blessing only comes when you do all three of these disciplines to give, to pray, and to fast. And you receive a hundredfold blessing. A hundredfold blessing is not a hundred times. If uh, the hundredfold blessing was that, a farmer could never get a hundredfold blessing if he raised cattle and he raised, uh, uh, because his cow, his cow is not going to have a hundred calves. But if that cow produced 10 or 12 calves over the lifespan of that mama cow, then that would be the best that cow could ever do. And that would be a hundredfold blessing. A hundred is the best you can get on a test. And so when we talk about the hundredfold blessing, it's the blessing of God that comes on you to exceed at a level that's higher than what you could ordinarily accomplish. Now that hundredfold blessing is not just about money. I thank God it pertains to money as well, but it covers every aspect of your life. The hundredfold bless blessing is an exponential multiplication of God's pouring out his favor on you. In other words, a mul an exponential multiplication is not 10 times 10 times, or not 10 plus 10 plus 10, but it's 10 times 10, times 10, times 10, and it's the multiplication of God's blessings upon you, upon your children, and upon your family not even born. So this hundredfold blessing manifests itself financially. One of the first manifestations that happen when people fast is poverty is broken. When sin came into the world, the first manifestation was poverty. It wasn't sickness. Adam lived another 100, 930 years, but immediately people became poor. They had to make their living by the sweat of their brow. So the first thing that happens when you fast, especially on a long fast, there will be a breaking of poverty. God will help you to buy a home. God will restore to you everything that's been stolen from you. And there is a release of sowing and, uh, and uh, reaping. And God begins to bless your seed in a special way. And Deuteronomy says he will bless you a thousand times more. But it's more than that. It's also a blessing upon you physically. And people who during this fast are going to live longer. And I say that because of Exodus, Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, that you'll not die before your time. I say that because of, the, of Isaiah 58 that talks about fasting, that you will live out your days in strength. But doctors say that if you will lose 10 pounds, it will extend your life by three years on the average. So if you fast 21 days and you don't lose 10 pounds, you're cheating, you're fasting on steaks and other things, and you're, you're cheating. But if you fast 21 days, on an average, according to medical science, you have a chance to extend your life at least three years. But the Bible says your health will spring forth speedily. It, it, uh, losing weight helps cure diabetes. It helps uh, with heart conditions. I'm talking about in the natural. I'm not talking about what happens in the supernatural. It, uh, now they've said that fasting is one of the great cures for cancer, to go on a fast. But when you begin to fast also, there's a spiritual impartation of God's miracle healing power in the name of Jesus. Now what am I talking about? I'm talking about this hundredfold blessing and what's going to happen here in this church in your family. 
there is, the Bible says that you will feed on the heritage of Jacob, your father. Raise your right hand. I'm going to get blessed from Jacob. Say it. The blessing that Jacob got is my blessing. Well, let me tell you the blessing he got. He had an angel come to him. And that angel stayed with him all of his life. It was the angel of prosperity. And the fact is, it not only stayed with him, it came to him in a dream, according to Genesis 31, 11, and showed him a business plan of how to prosper. Then when he got ready to go home uh, to meet his brother, this angel came again. He wrestled with him, and this angel changed his name. And then the angel began to go with his son, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. It was the angel of the Lord that was with him. And he prospered in all that he did, and his overseer, and his master made him overseer over all of his house. And so the Bible says that when we fast like this, we get the same blessing that was with Jacob. This angel of blessing begins to go with us. This week, I've had twice that an angel came to me came to me at 3.30 in the morning, and uh, Margaret and I, we had some business, and we were making some decisions, and I told her, I said, this angel told me what was going to happen, told me exactly what was going to take place. We went to this meeting, and exactly what that angel said, it happened to the very word. It was the blessing of Jacob that is on me because I've participated in this fast. It's not because I'm special. It's because I have participated. But one of the great things about that hundredfold blessing is fasting attracts this anointing of the Holy Spirit. Some of you feel it right now. That's the anointing and presence of God. And it begins to give you guidance and it begins to show you the right decisions about your marriage, about your family, and about your children and how to deal with them. I remember when I first started fasting, I was pastoring a small church in Lexington. I was a single pastor, and I began to pray that God would give me a wife. And there was a, a family there in Lexington. It was a very fine family, and they had two daughters. And the one daughter, who went into the ministry uh, later, I began to pursue her, and I had gotten a date. And so I was in prayer, and the Lord spoke to me, said, this is a great, fine lady, but she's not for you. I have chosen Margaret for you. I said, Margaret? Margaret's turned me down twice. I'm not going to go get turned down the third time. And the Lord spoke to me, said, no, Margaret is the girl that will fulfill your life. She, she had shut the door on me, not once, but twice, and didn't even feel bad about it. <laughs> and, and I said, well, she's turned me down. And the Lord said to me, he says, well, uh, you ask her right on the spot to do this. And she, uh, women don't like that, Bob. They like to plan. Margaret likes to think about things. And so I called and I asked her and she agreed to go out with me. And We've lived happily ever after. Hallelujah. <laughs> now, everybody look this way. Don't look towards Margaret because Margaret has a different. But it happened through fasting. And God will direct you and God will guide you, especially when it comes to family matters. Now, I want to share with you about a family in the Bible and how this family uh, was an ordinary type family. They had issues just like we all have issues. But one of the traits of this family is they were powerful fasters. And I want you to see what began to happen in their family. It's the story of the tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was the last son of Jacob, and he was from Rachel. Rachel had trouble getting pregnant. And she, um, her last child she had, she had Joseph. But when she got pregnant with Benjamin and he was delivered, she died. And so she said, you are the son that killed me. You are the son of my sorrow. And she died. 
that's a pretty heavy load for a young kid to carry. I killed my mama. I don't know how long after that, but Jacob came and he said, no, son, you're not to carry that burden. You're the son of my strength. And he changed the name from Benoi unto Benjamin. That's how he got his name. And so I'm sure that Benjamin, he carried that heavy load. Then he had this brother, brother uh, Joseph. But Joseph, there was so much jealousy in the family, they sold him into slavery. And now he's by himself. And so Judah, who was really the main ringleader in selling uh, his brother into slavery, became his special protectant. And they and, and Benjamin and Judah became closer than even Joseph would be to Benjamin when he was reunited, reunited with him. But here he is. And so, but he had special talents. First of all, he was a fierce fighter. He probably had a, a chip on his shoulder from the stuff that happened to him. And so his descendants became the most fierce fighters in all of the tribes of, of Israel. They said they could shoot an arrow even at dark and hit the bullseye. They, they took the sling and they, they took it left-handed and they could fire a sling that was as strong as a bullet. And many say that it was a Benjamite who taught David how to fight and how to use the sling. And they became uh, powerful musicians, the greatest musicians in all of Israel. And the one thing about them, they were left-handed. 95% of the Benjamites were left-handed, which was completely uh, alien to the other tribes, left-handed. How many are here are left-handed? I see you. Stand up if you're left-handed. Now, when we talk about the descendants of Benjamin, here's who we're talking about, their families. We're talking about the Apostle Paul. We're talking about Jeremiah the prophet. We're talking about Samuel in the Bible. We're talking about Esther. We're talking about some of the most powerful people that God ever used. And the Bible says in Acts 19, it says, and Paul did special miracles. Paul was left-handed. And there is a special anointing and assignments that God gives to left-handed people. Whether you recognize it or not, there's giftings you have that ordinary people don't have. First of all, a left-handed person, uh, generally, they make 15% more money than a right-handed person. Secondly, a left-handed person usually has musical talents. They have problems sometimes sleeping, and they're hard for to sleep with because they move around so much. But they are unique, and they are talented with special gifts. I want to pray for you that this year, that your special gift from God, God will fulfill it, and God will help you to find your destiny. Stretch your hands out to one of these that are standing. Father, I pray, I pray for each of these left-handed people that, Lord, a special anointing will be upon them in a powerful way in Jesus' name to fulfill their destiny. Amen. You may be seated. But this man, Benjamin, one of the most powerful things they had was a sensitivity to the things of God. And when you go through the different tribes, it was a tribe of Benjamin that probably fasted more than any other tribe. And what I'm talking about is this blessing that follows people who fast and how it began to follow the tribe of Benjamin and its people. There was a, a, a lady from the tribe of Benjamin. Her name was Hannah. She couldn't have any babies. And her husband was a very righteous man. And you well, praise the Lord. I hope you uh, enjoyed today's program as we shared about fasting. And I also want to serve you communion. I take communion when I fast. 
and I never have considered it breaking a fast. But the communion brings you to a place where God makes a covenant with you. And that covenant is every blessing that took place and every victory that happened on the cross becomes your victory. When you take of the communion, the plans and uh, the, the assignments that Satan has for you, for your family, suddenly are canceled. It's like Jesus comes and he sits down at your table and he's with you. And so I want you to get some representatives of the communion. It may be some bread or crackers or some juice because we're going to receive it in just a moment. But before we do, again, I want to encourage you to uh, get the one-year Bible and also I have the magazine on fasting. For any gift, we'll send you this magazine. It'll be a blessing. It tells everything you need to know about fasting. And then if you would like the, the Bible for your gift of $58, this is what it costs to put together a food basket where it includes um, a Hebrew Bible to give to a family that will feed them for a week, a family of four people. So your gift uh, goes to help purchase that, and we'll send it to you this uh, magazine and the one-year Bible. But I would like to serve communion with you and pray for you and ask God's blessings to be with you today. Would you stop whatever you're doing and join with me? I want you to pray this prayer out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, you have a plan for my life. And in the name of Jesus, take out of me whatever Satan has put in my life and put back in me what Satan has stolen. Father, I receive today your healing power, your deliverance power, your forgiving power. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat together. Let's drink of the cup. Praise God. Well, I want to thank you for being a part of our program today. And uh, I want you to get the magazine. I want you to read it. I believe it will bless you. There is also in this magazine a pre-fasting diet. Many of you have tried to fast and you get headaches and you get, get don't feel good. Well, that's a sign the fasting's working. It's feeding all those toxins and poisons. But I have this pre-fasting diet that cleanses your body. It speeds up your metabolism. It was given to us by one of the hospitals that help people lose weight. And you have to be careful because you, you can lose a lot of weight on that, and I don't want you to get too skinny. But uh, it's all here in the magazine, and it'll all be a blessing. Thanks for viewing today on Word Alive. Miracles and signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name.